say, man, we 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 live. You know what I'm saying? Nah, not really live, but we recording. <laughs> hey, man. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I, I kind of got a, I, I, I got quite a bit, man. You know what I'm saying? I got a little bit right here. I actually got a title for this one, though, man. You know, God developed this word in me like this. The the part that the message is titled, God gave me this like within the last three days. And he finished it up today when I was in prayer. You know what I'm saying? But I got I got some little other little tidbits. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, man, let's pray. Uh, God, I thank you. <laughs> I thank you, Lord, for uh, just for being the awesome God that you are. Hey, and it is a move of God going on, man. Uh, just like I said in one of my past sermons, you know what I mean? It's a real dark time. It's real. It's the end times. You you already know what's coming on the earth, man. But but God got an undercurrent. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to get back to that. But God, uh, I just thank you for this word. I thank you for your son, Jesus, Lord. We thank you for being a loving, merciful, compassionate, gracious God. Thank you for what you're doing in the earth. Thank you for what you're doing in the lives of people that's calling on your name right now, Lord, in sincerity. Uh, thank you for being an awesome God. You're not going to be outdone by the devil and not in the lives of those that trust in you. Uh, I just pray that you guide my words, guide my speech. Give me what to say. Let it be you speaking through me, Lord, and not just me. Let the inspiration come from you. Let me open up my mouth and speak as your oracles. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love. Thank you for your presence. And uh, just ask you to have your way, Lord, in word and in deed. Let uh, signs follow your word. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, yeah, man, I remember uh, I put some on Facebook. I was like, you know, uh, people who I said, I'm not going for all that positive stuff. But these was the three. These was the three that I said, though. I said the second coming of Christ. I'm going for that. I'm going for uh, the salvation of the remnant. You know, the people that God is trying to call in in these last times, the people that he calling in and the people that's going to hear his voice and yield to the spirit of God, the salvation of the remnant, the second coming of Christ. And then I said various diverse signs, wonders and miracles and the supernatural move of God in the lives of people that's calling on his name in sincerity, you know what I'm saying? Cause really it's the end times. It's a dark time, but like, it's a special time too, though, for those who really, for those who really walking with God, it's really a special time, especially right before everything get crazy. You know what I mean? Especially right now, but it's, you know, even with stuff going crazy in the world, man, God got us, you know what I mean? Like, and then whatever it's going to be, it's going to be, you know what I mean? Whatever you got to go through, he going to be with you through it. You know what I mean? But it, it's really a special time. Like, I feel like Isaac, you know what I mean? Sold in the drought, in the famine and got a hundredfold return, Genesis 26. You know what I mean? It said he'll bless you in the presence of your enemy. So whatever's going on around you, that don't stop the move of God. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a dark time, but like I said, God got an undercurrent. You know what I'm saying? The whole ocean river is going this way. You know what I'm saying? And you, you look at the top of the ocean and it's flowing this way, but God got an undercurrent. You know what I'm saying? Up under the surface, you know what I mean? God's still doing this thing, man, regardless of what the devil got going on, regardless of what it looked like in society. You know what I mean? God's still doing his thing, you know what I mean, amongst his people and, and trying to pull in other people, those who going to hear his voice and not harden their heart. You know what I mean? Because it, it's real in the field, but it's really a special time, you know, blessings coming through and all that, man. I remember I posted something on Facebook about some student loan forgiveness and, and they was going to issue a refund and Hey, that right there happened. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> yeah, that a little uh, unexpected refund came, and hey, you know what I'm saying. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying. Glory to God, and 
And that's all I'm going to say on that. You know what I'm saying? But it's a lot of things going on, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, even though it's a rough time, yeah, I'm not really, I ain't going to lie, I'm not feeling it right now. But, you know, I, I don't expect that just because I'm serving the Lord that I ain't going to feel it. I, I ain't saying that. But, you know, God, you know, it's we're in a special time right now, man. And and even if it don't feel special, even when, when stuff is really getting hectic and we can feel it, God's still with us. You know what I mean? You got to have a soldier mentality. Endure hardness is a good soldier. You know what I'm saying? War, good warfare, all that. You know what I mean? But you got to be ready for the tough times, even though they ain't hit yet. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, a soldier mind state, man. But this message right here, man, is it's called Kingdom Walls. So this is what God gave me, Kingdom Walls. And a lot of time he give me my little three subtopics. You know what I'm saying? Kingdom Walls. The first wall is the wall around your life. Like Job, he had a hedge of protection around his life, his family, his finances, uh, his health. You know what I mean? All that, his relationships. So the, the the first wall is the wall around your life. You could call it a hedge. You could call it a wall. You know what I mean? And the kingdom of God is compared to a vineyard. And uh, Isaiah 5, 2 and Matthew 21, you know what I mean? He, he says uh, that the vineyard is really it represent the kingdom of God. He said he gave the kingdom of God to the Pharisees, talking about the word of God, the law, God's expectations, just letting them know how he felt about them, the covenant, all that. You know what I mean? So the kingdom of God is compared to a vineyard, and then it, it can also be compared to a city. You know what I mean? So, But the first wall is the hedge of protection, the wall around your life. The second wall is your mind. You know, Proverbs talk about a man with no self-control is like a city with broke down walls. You know what I mean? So your mind is a wall and then the actual wall of the kingdom of God. Luke 16, he said it was a wall. They can't come from over here to over there. They can't come from over there to over here. And then in uh, Revelation 21, the new Jerusalem, you see the wall around the heavenly city. So I'm going to get into that. But before I get into that, I just got some little random subjects. Uh, Like I'm a big student. I'm a big student of Solomon. Like I'm a big student of Solomon. And then if, and, and then like I'm familiar with the good and the bad about Solomon, but, but this is what it come down to, man. This is what God showed me. Um, uh, like Solomon had more wisdom than anybody, but Solomon had some very, uh, he, he had a lot of disobedience in his life though. You know, when he, when, you know, when he, you know what I mean? He, he disobeyed, man. You know what I'm saying? He was very disobedient. So this is the conclusion right here. Uh, just like, and I'm going to tie it into the Holy Ghost. You know what I'm saying? Like, check this out. Like, you can have the Holy Ghost. You could be born again. You know what I mean? You can have the Spirit of God, but you can backslide. So what that means is, or you can sin, or you can do a sinful act, or you can go into a sinful lifestyle, even though you was born again. So what it come down to is you can have the spirit of God, but not be walking according to the spirit. And that's what Solomon did. You can have the wisdom of God, but you can choose to do things that's not according to wisdom. You can choose to make decisions and you can choose a lifestyle that's not according to wisdom, even though you have wisdom. Just because you have wisdom don't mean that every decision you make is according to wisdom. And, and you can choose a lifestyle that's not according to wisdom, even though you have the wisdom to know better. You know what I mean? Just like when you have the spirit of God, you got the Holy Ghost. You, uh, you, you might be saved, so you possess the Holy Ghost, or you might have even been filled with the Holy Ghost, received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but you can still choose to make decisions or live a lifestyle that's not after the leading and guiding of the spirit. So you can have something, you can possess something, but not live accordingly. So that's what... uh. God just gave me a reflection like the old and the new. So I'm going to go on and break it down in scripture. So now we know that God gave uh, Solomon wisdom. He was wiser than any man, 
but he was very disobedient. You can look at Deuteronomy 17. You can look at, uh, what is that? Uh, what is that? First Kings chapter 10 and, or is it first Kings 11? Let me see something. I didn't, I didn't write them scriptures down, but I'm going to give it to you. You can look at, uh, You can look at Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 14 through 20. You can look at Deuteronomy 17, verses 14 through 20. And then you can look at, uh, and then you can look at 1 Kings. Then you can look at first Kings chapter 10 and you can look at first Kings chapter 11. So Solomon, he was wiser than everybody, but he was also quite disobedient. And, uh, I'm just going to read Proverbs chapter 28, verse four and verse seven. And Solomon said that uh, the, the beginning, the beginning, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom and the fear of God is to depart from evil. The fear of God is to be obedient. So it's wisdom is obedience. <laughs> you can skip it. Wisdom is obedience. But even though Solomon had all that wisdom, he he there came a point when he made decisions and he chose a lifestyle that wasn't according to wisdom. Proverbs 28, verse four, they that forsake the law, praise the wicked. Talking about God's law to disobey God is to forsake his law. They that forsake the law, praise or to transgress the law is to sin. They that forsake the law, praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them. So you fighting against the wicked by doing what God wants you to do. And then verse seven, whoso keepeth the law is a wise son. Now we know Solomon was wise, but he didn't always keep God's law. Whoso keep the law is a wise son, but he that is a companion of riotous men shameth his father. So Solomon was wise, but he did some stuff that wasn't wise and eventually chose a lifestyle that was not wise. Even though he possessed that wisdom, he didn't always walk according to that wisdom. And it's the same thing under this new covenant with the Holy Ghost. Let's go to, uh, I'm going to go to Galatians 5.25. That's why you see this command in the Bible. He say, if we live in the spirit, which means if you post to be born again, if you post to be saved, if you have the spirit of God in you by salvation or by the baptism of the Holy Ghost, whichever measure of the spirit you have, you post to be alive in the spirit. If you born again, then you alive in the spirit. You were made alive in the spirit. So if you born again, if you've been saved, if you possess the spirit of God, If you possess the spirit of God, whatever measure, if you possess the spirit of God, Galatians 5.25, he said, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit because you can have the spirit, but make decisions and do things that was not in the spirit. When you disobey, when you sin, you know, what I mean, if you choose to go back to a sinful lifestyle or you want to hold on to your sin, like. You're not walking in the spirit. You've been made alive in the spirit, but you're not walking in the spirit. And see, this life is a test. You know what I mean? If, if you were saved, you know what I mean? He going to ask you in the judgment, what did you do with my spirit? Did you live life following the leading and guiding of my spirit? Or you tried to lead my spirit rather than following the leading of my spirit? Yeah. Did you follow the flesh or did you follow the spirit? Yeah. Yeah, man. Simple. All right. Romans 8, 13, man. I use this one a lot. Said, uh, for if ye live after the flesh, you can live after the flesh or you can live after the spirit. You can possess the spirit, but still be living after the flesh. What you think backsliding is or somebody who doesn't grow spiritually, they get saved, but then they don't grow. 
They just keep living the same life or you go backwards. So you can have the spirit, but be living after the flesh. He said, if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. Talking about eternal death, spiritual death. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. So the point is, man, you can have the spirit of God, but not be walking after the spirit, walking after the flesh, which the result of that is death. Just because you had a born again experience, that's not it. You got to learn how to walk in the spirit. You got to learn how to be Christ like. You got to learn how to follow Jesus. You got to learn how to die to the sin nature and the works of the flesh. So. It's a growth process. That's what everything means when he say, I got to decrease. He got to increase. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Grow in grace. Uh, take up your cross. Yeah, die to self. Deny self. Follow me. Take up your cross daily. People talk about dying daily. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's what all that stuff means. Basically, spiritual growth. You know what I mean? Learning to be more and more like Christ. And uh, turning away more and more from sin and worldliness and stuff that don't please God. I mean, putting on that new man, which is created after Christ Jesus in righteousness and true holiness, man. That All that type of stuff, man. So, uh, yeah, learning to be more and more like Christ, man. Being transformed by the renewing of the mind. All that stuff basically mean the same thing. It's talking about spiritual growth. Okay, moving on. Uh, this, I just had a thought, man. Like I was in prayer and I had a thought like a few days ago, man. Like, you know, like how in life you have to learn what's you and what's not you. Like, this is me. Nah, this ain't me right here. Or yeah, this is for me or nah, that ain't for me, man. This lifestyle, that ain't for me, man. This, nah, that, that ain't me. You know what I mean? Like it's something you have to figure out in life, man. You, you got to figure yourself out, man. You got to, uh, it's certain things in life, man, that, you know, trying to figure out what's you and what's not you and what's for you and what's not for you. Like everybody don't survive that, man. People died trying to live a life that wasn't even them. People die. Yeah. I feel the Holy ghost. I just, yeah, I just, I feel like I'm in a cloud. I feel like I'm in a cloud, like a, I, it's hard to explain like a, like a, a weight. But it's a it's a it's a different kind of weight. It's a good weight, like a moisture. Like it's hard to explain. I feel it though. But um, like people people die trying to figure out what's for them and what ain't for them. Like you know how you come to the point and you be like, nah, that ain't for me right there. Nah, that ain't me right there. Like people die trying to get to that point. You know what I mean? Like everybody don't make it to that point where they can say, nah, yeah, this is for me. I know this is me right here. Like, nah, that ain't for me right there. Like, nah, that ain't me. Like you trying to put on a certain lifestyle or be something or do something. And, and you'd be like, nah, that ain't me right there. Like people die trying to figure that out. Like everybody don't, everybody don't get to that point. Like people die trying to live a lifestyle that ain't them. People die trying to be somebody that ain't them. You know what I mean? And the reason why something ain't you is because God got something better for you. And I kind of think about gang banging. Like when I really think back on gang banging, like gang banging wasn't me. You know what I'm saying? I was uh, what they call a flip flop. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I first got to one hood when I first got exposed to to gang banging. You know, I was in Chapel Hill. This is like in the, the 90s. You know, this is when... uh. Like it was really active. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. It was really active. You know what I'm saying? And it was really active. You know what I mean? And I was like, what, nine, 10 when I first got exposed to it. Right. So then I, I ended up, I got kicked out of Chapel Hill school. So I, I had to go live with my mom in South Tyler. And then as I, as I grew up out in South Tyler, you know, I met people, uh, I met a lot of people from the west side of town. Shout out to Chapel Hill, man. Shout out to the uh, to the groove. I'm just going to say that. Shout out to the west. You know what I'm saying? This was before rolling 60s, though. Back then, we were just west side. It was just west side crib. This was before uh, rolling 60s and all that. But it, it, hey, shout out neighborhood, too. You know what I'm saying? But uh, but yeah, I had, I, I had a lot of, uh, in, the, in South Tyler, I met a lot of people that was from the west side. 
you know, or they claim West Side. So I got down with that gang, West Side Crip. But but really, I was like, you know, I, I was wanting to be down with the set in Chapel Hill, though. I, I wasn't down. I didn't get put down or nothing like that. But I was at, I was at that age where, you know, you start off, they call, they call it being courted on. Like when you young and you be around the set or whatever, like you start, you know, learning how to throw up the set and you might start drawing and spray painting or, you know, whatever, like little stuff like that before you actually officially get put on. You know what I mean? And just want to roll with the big homies and all that. So I was kind of like looking up to it then. But then in South Tyler, like years went on, I end up uh, joining another gang. But now, for, like, like we had a little click, you know what I mean? But it was under the West Side umbrella, you know what I mean? So I remember getting getting put on to that. And uh, then later on, I then later on, I moved back to Chapel Hill. So I'm cl- so like I made myself like the odd man out because I was still you know I was still claiming West Side or whatever but but I, after it's all over I'm finna explain something though but I was so I was claiming West Side then I started going out of town I was gone for some years and uh, I kind of I kind of start back I ain't gonna say I start back I didn't start back gang banging when I was in Tulsa but it was a I, I had a connection with Hoover though you know what I mean I had a connection with Hoover. Uh, from from being from way back in Chapel Hill as a little kid, I had a connection with Hoover in Tulsa. Then in LA, I had a I had a real connection with Hoover, <laughs> and uh, then I came back claiming Hoover. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I came back claiming Hoover. But check it. You know, if you look at it like I was claiming a side of town that I I, I wasn't from. I was claiming West Side, like I wasn't from the West Side. I never lived over there. Like you can claim a clique. But it didn't make sense to claim a side of town that I that I wasn't from. Didn't have no people over there. Like all, even my West Side homies, we was all in South Tyler. Like we never, at least not with me. I never really spent no whole lot of time in the West, just hanging out or none of that. So like it just and like I look back at it, and then another thing, you know, when it come to gang banging, like. It, it, like you got camaraderie with your homeboys, but then you got beef with your enemies. You know what I mean? But I, 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 I was interested in the camaraderie, but I never beefed with nobody on no on no gang stuff. Like I never beefed with nobody. Like whoever was supposed to be our enemies, I wasn't in that. <laughs> whoever was supposed to be our enemies because they from this side or they from that gang, like I never got involved in that. So at the end of the day, like I learned that gang banging wasn't for me. Like I wasn't, you know, when, when I, when I got to a certain age, like, you know, I'm standing on all business though. You know what I mean? If it come down to something, you know what I mean? I'm standing on all business and ain't tripping on losing no fight or nothing. You're going to have to do it to me. You know what I mean? And if it go beyond fighting, I just know I'm trying to get at you for you get at me. You know what I mean? So, so I wasn't no coward or nothing like that, but as far as gang banging, that wasn't for me, but, uh, and that's just an example from, that's just an example from me, you know, now, cause what, what's me is I got love for everybody. I don't, I don't have no problem with nobody because of what gang you from or because of where you from. You know what I mean? Now it, it'll have to be something more personal. Like I really would try to avoid all that. I try to be at peace with all men as much as possible, you know, but, uh, if it if it is anything, it ain't gonna be over no where you cause you from here or you from there or you got on this color or you from that gang. It'll never be because of that. Not not on my end. You know what I mean? Not on my end. But uh, you know, I, I, I was a street dude. I always I say I had a foot in the streets. I was always either in school. Most of the time, I, I also had a foot in school, had a foot in ministry, or had a foot. Or, or was working, you know what I mean? So it wasn't too much of my life where I was just totally in the streets. I might have been in the streets, but I had I had something else going on too, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, you know, and then like I would have regretted it if I would have ended up doing a whole lot of jail time or something or or something bad would have really happened to me because of gang banging. Like I would have, I wouldn't, I would have probably regretted that. You know what I mean? That's how people end up snitching too, like, 
I never ended up in no situation, but that's that's how people end up snitching. Like when you do something and it's really not you, but then you face with a serious consequence. And then then you get to thinking like, man, this ain't me. <laughs> and then people be snitching this stuff like, you know what I mean? So like, but anyway, man, like I just thank God, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? That 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 I didn't really get jammed up in no you know terrible situation behind that because it can really get ugly, it can really get ugly like anywhere too you know anywhere it don't you don't have to be in L A or Chicago to get jammed up on some gang stuff, you can get jammed up on some gang stuff right here in Tyler, cities that's smaller than Tyler, you can get jammed up on some gang stuff, you know what I mean in Marshall you can get jammed up on in Waco. You know what I mean? You can get jammed up on some gang stuff you in Turl. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can get jammed up on some gang stuff, man, and uh in places that, that you might think that it ain't even like that. You know what I'm saying? Unknown small town. You can get jammed up, man. Just wrong place, wrong time. You know what I mean? People ain't figured they self out. You know what I mean? But when you're trying to figure yourself out, you can end up in a in a in a bad situation. Like you can end up with a life sentence, you know, because you you didn't figure out that this ain't really for you. And when you really got to pay the price for it, now you realize that that ain't you. Like, I, I try to encourage people, man, choose something to, uh, to be about that you willing to live for it, you willing to fight for it. You don't want to, but you willing to kill for it. You willing to do time for it. You willing to die for it. You know, them five, man, you know, choose, choose something, you know, put put your all in it. You know what I mean? Something that you willing to fight for. You willing to kill for. You willing to die for. You willing to do time for. You willing to live for it. You know what I mean? Day in and day out. You know what I mean? The only thing I can really say that about is, is Jesus, you know, and, you know, my loved ones, if I felt like if it was, you know, that uh, a protective situation or something like that. Like, you know what I mean? I would pray, you, you know what I mean? Like a, a protective situation or stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like even, even revenge and retaliation, I would, I would, I would desire to leave that in the hand of God, but sometimes you never know, you know what I mean? But, uh, I, I, I you know, it's good to keep your loved ones in prayer, man. You don't want nothing to happen that's going to cause you to get on a revenge path, retaliation path, or, or you know, have to do something crazy to somebody protecting them. You know, I, I always be proactive with your prayer life, man, all that type of stuff. Um, you know, pray to keep the angry hand of Satan out of your life, out of your people life. You know what I'm saying? Um, but anyway, man, the, the point is, like, people... Bad things can happen to people and you can even die over something that ain't even you. You know what I mean? And you know what I mean? Something that, that ain't even you. Something or, or anything, wanting to be a pimp or something like that, like get killed over, mess with the wrong female or something, wanting to be a player, wanting to be a pimp, get smoked behind that type of thing. Like anything, man, it could be anything. It could be anything. You know, and then at the end of the day, you, ah, oh, this ain't even me. You And it ain't always about being built like that, because if you a soldier, you can choose whatever path you want to choose and stand on it and take the consequences, you know. But why suffer bad stuff, you know, if, if it ain't even profitable at the end of the day? You know, why, why, why go through any extra suffering if you don't have to? You know what I mean? Like, like I know God too well, bro, like. You know what I'm saying? God, I've been rocking with God. He's been rocking with me all my life. You know what I mean? And yeah, it, it, yeah any anything would have been sad. You know what I mean? Anything would have been sad, man. Like, you know, if I would have really had drastic consequences, like for unnecessary stuff. I ain't talking about standing up for yourself as a man. And you might even have to go to war just standing on business as a man. I, I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about that extra stuff. You know what I mean? That that extra stuff. That's what I'm talking about. Like gang banging and all that. It's, it's one thing if you came up in it, you know what I mean? But 
if you had the hand of God on your life in a real way, then you ought to know that ain't for you. Or if you ain't built like that, or even if you are built like that, you know what I mean? You don't want your life to mess around and get wasted when God really has something else for you. You know, that's why you see all these guys with these prison channels that the real ones at the end of the day, they trying to keep you out of prison. You know, they trying to kick game that's going to make you think twice for you end up there. You know what I mean? That the real ones ain't glorifying it. You know what I mean? Now, you know, they done had some funny moments and some entertaining moments, but the real ones, they not glorifying it. You know what I mean? They really trying to keep the next man from going down that path, at least make you put some thought into what you got going on. Because you end up in a place and then you be like, nah, this ain't me. But, you know, <laughs> you got to think that for you end up there. And like I said, sometimes people ain't even built like that. But even if you are built like that, you know, why would you want to waste? Why would you want to waste your life and end up dying early? Because you, you can be a soldier, but you can still get smoked. Oh, yeah, he was man. He was a soldier. He wasn't scared of nothing, but he still got smoked, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. You know, you can be a soldier and still get smoked. You know what I mean? And, you know, why would you want to spend any time behind bars that you didn't have to? If you did what you did and you ended up there, it is what it is. But if it could be prevented, why not prevent it? And I ain't talking about ratting. I'm not talking about snitching. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just talking about thinking wisely, choosing a wise path of life for yourself. Why would you want to spend any extra time if you don't have to? But I'm talking about me. As the example, though, you know, what I mean, like gang banging or whatever, like everybody don't survive that trying to figure out, oh, nah, this ain't me. You know, God got God had a whole different calling on my life. What I'm doing, getting, you know, what I'm saying what I'm doing, getting smoked. You know, what I'm saying because another dude mad because, you know, what I'm saying because I done knocked him for his and then I get smoked. But my calling in life was really the, you know, what I'm saying be living the word first and preaching the word, like what I look like, you know what I'm saying? What I look like dying over some gang stuff when God really called me to not only live holy, but preach holiness, like what I look like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but people don't always, people don't always survive, man, trying to figure out what's them and what's not them. And what's for them in life and what ain't for them in life. You know what I mean? Trying to sleep around and, and then die, <clears throat> you know, die of a, well, man, hey, it could still happen. I'm finna say you don't really hear about that much, but hey, it could still happen. You know, you mess around and die from AIDS or something. You know what I mean? Because you wanted to sleep around and stick your penis in everything, but God really called you to live holy. And really, you know, preach against lust and and all that sexual sin. You know, what I mean, that was your real calling. But then you got taken out over here by AIDS or, or something like that. I'm telling you, like, it's, it's real in the field, though, man. Like, but my point is, and I'm going to end the first video, man. Everybody don't survive trying to figure out what's them and what's not them. What's for them and what ain't for them. You know, what I mean, trying to trying to fit in something that you in a category that you didn't even belong, trying to live a lifestyle that ain't even you. You know what I mean? People got to come to they self, man. And, and, ain't, and, and ain't nothing a worse fit than when God really got his hand on you and you trying to do something else. And it ain't always about not being built like that. That's a, that's another thing. Cause some people ain't built like that, but some people is, is trying to go. You know, come win, lose, draw, whatever. Victory, defeat, I'm with it. Like a lot of people, you can be built for it, but why waste your life, though, doing something that wasn't your ultimate calling? That's how you be the most effective in life is find out what your ultimate calling is. But a lot of time that come with God. You know, some people can find they calling without God, but, you know, uh, God will definitely help you to pinpoint it and be the most effective person you can do and end up doing good at the end of the day. And it's one thing when you in ignorance, but when it comes into your heart and you start feeling conviction about what you got going on, you know what I mean? You start feeling like it's something else for you. 
you got to be about that something else. You know what I mean? You got to be about your higher purpose, the highest purpose that you know you have in life. That's what you got to be about. You, the high, because there's a lot of stuff we can do, especially if you're smart, especially if you're talented. It's a lot of paths you can choose. But what's the highest? What's the highest calling? What's the highest thing that you can do that's going to help the most people? That's going to bring God the most glory? You know what I'm saying? That's going to save other people extra pain and misery in life and giving other people game and knowledge. Be about your highest purpose, man, because you don't want to end up in a bad situation or end up dead over something that ain't even you. You know what I'm saying? Over something that a lifestyle that don't even fit you right. You know what I mean? And not because you can't do it or, you know what I'm saying? Or not because you a coward or a lame or you can't do it. But life, God has something better for you. And you chose the lower calling not the high call of God, but we got to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. Yeah, in Christ Jesus, man. Yeah, that's video one, part one.